Okay guys, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working on uh, factoring polynomials and really just adding notes to our notebook as well as just getting some independent practice. Um, the goal of this video lesson is not going to be so much the explanation, although it will still be in there for the first example, but rather um, just to get you some practice of the things we've been doing in class already, which is sort of discovering how to do factoring using the diamond problem and the generic rectangle. Um, as such, we're going to make sure these notes are in our notebook. Um, Every single problem you're going to be able to pause it and uh, do the problem except for the first one. Um, which again, if you're uh, familiar with the process already from doing it in class, we're just going to pretty much you know, watch the process again, make sure it clicks into our brains, and then go ahead and move on um, to the practice. During the practice, just because I'm doing this for anybody, whether you're getting it really well or you're still trying to understand it, I'm going to go ahead and explain every single step. That doesn't mean you have to sit through every single step if you already understand the process. Your goal then would be to go ahead and pause the problem, do the problem on your own, um, sometimes fast forward it to the answer and check if you're right, or just kind of listen as I go through the steps, making sure that you understand. Um, they are going to go pretty quickly after the uh, first one, like I said before, but you will get an explanation on each piece in case you don't understand something. Okay, first of all, I want to make sure you understand which notes we're doing. So you won't have the little green lines on there because yours doesn't isn't taken from a picture. But um, we're going to start on page one of factoring polynomials. It's the one that has the example already in there, and the rest of them are all blank. As you can see from the entire notes page, we pretty much just have um, you know about nine worked out examples. Okay, first of all, I want you guys to think about the essential question. Remember, the essential question is what is it that we're supposed to learn from the lesson today? And sometimes there's more than one. Okay, first of all, what is the process when factoring a polynomial? What are the steps we're going to do? And what should our answer look like? What is the difference between factored form, simplified form, and factors in general? Um, this is something we've already been talking about in class. You're going to hear me emphasizing this, and I want to make sure you guys are starting to build this vocabulary on your own as well. All right, first off, we're going to start with the rectangle like we have before. If you remember, the first thing we have automatically when we do a problem like this is we can go ahead and fill in this term and this term. Because every time we do one of these rectangles, we always leave our x's in these two places right here. So the x's are going to be on the outside. Um, because of that, we always end up with an x squared. Obviously, on this problem, either this one or this one has got to be a 2, but not both. Okay, the next thing we have to figure out is how do we figure out what goes into those two squares? Okay, um, We know that 7 has to be broken up somehow. So it could be something like 1 and 6. Could be 3 and, oh sorry, 2 and 5, 3 and 4, etc., etc. There's a lot of possibilities that could go in there. The way we determine that, and this is where we really want to emphasize to you, is the way we figure out how to split them is using our diamond problem. That's the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to help us figure out what goes into the two remaining squares so that we can then determine the outside of our rectangle. Okay, the reason the diamond problem is useful is because we're looking for two numbers that are going to multiply together to equal 6 and add up to equal 7 in a normal problem. Remember, in class we discovered that for this example we have to include both of the ends. So what I do here is I multiply 2x squared and a positive 6, which gives me 12x squared. This is the part that's being multiplied. When we multiply and get our 6, those are the numbers that go together to multiply it for that 6 as well as the rest of the problem. The 7, that's the part that's being added. Remember, we're looking for the two things that add together to equal 7. That's why it goes on the bottom of a diamond problem. Because as you remember, on top of a diamond problem, we have multiplication. On the bottom of the diamond problem, we have addition. Okay, so now we look for our numbers, which are, in fact, 3x and 4x. Those numbers, then, are the numbers that go into our rectangle. It doesn't matter if you switched them on your paper. It's the same process. Okay, a lot of you guys got in the habit of just saying, oh, okay, well, it's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 4, because on the simple examples, it worked that way. Well, when you have a 2 in front, it's not so simple. What we have to do now is we have to think to ourselves, how can I figure out what's going to go on the outside of any of my squares? So for example, if I'm looking at this spot right here, how am I going to figure out what could go in there? Okay, Could it be a 2? Yeah. Could it be a 1x? Yeah, that would work too. So whenever we have a situation like that, we can't just say, uh, I'm going to put x there and I'm going to go with it. Or even, I'm going to put 2x and go with it. There has to be a step that makes sense. 
Well, what we do know is that it has to either be 2 and 1, like that, or 2 and 1. So the question is, which one would make sense? The current one we have on the screen right now doesn't make any sense. Why? Because of this right here. If that's a 2 and that's a 3, this is going to have to be something like 3 over 2. Well, we're not going to have fractional parts in here. Um, it's not going to make the problem simple, that's for sure. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to stay away from that, and we're going to go ahead and say, well, if it can't be a 2 and a 1, okay. So then what we're going to say is, since it can't be that way, it must be a 2x on top. It can't be on the other side. Well, then that must be an x right there. And from there, you should be able to fill in the rest of the pieces. Um, I like to think the simplest one is always the one that's across from the simple x like here. So in order for this to be a 3x, and that to be an x on the outside, well that simply makes, a two, makes it have to be a 3 on top. We could just as easily figure out that outside the 4x had to be a 2, but I do think some people, if they're not careful, because of the practice problems we did before, are going to be able just to put a 4 right there and think, well that's what we did every other problem. But when we actually multiply these two together, 4 times 2 is not 4, it's 8. So to be careful here, what you want to do is, I like to go ahead and do the simpler one first, make sure that's correct, and use that along with the 6 to help me get the outside. Because the only way I'm going to multiply 3 by something and get 6 is if that something is positive 2. Okay. So now what we've done is we've used our rectangle. The rectangle is a way to find a lot of things. It could be to find the missing pieces in our puzzles. It could be to write in simplified form, which remember simplified form is up here because it's completely simplified. Or it could be to write in factored form. One of the easy ways to remember is what's the problem starting off with? Well, this problem's starting off with our simplified form, and it's asking us to turn it into two factors, or more factors. It could be for, for now for two. So what that means is our answer should probably be in factored form. So I'm going to go ahead, and you guys have it below on your notes, but I'm going to kind of move this up so we have room. What I'm going to do now is I want to write my answer out. All I'm going to do, as you might remember, is take the sides of my rectangle. The sides of my rectangle work like this. This is one of them and this is the other one of them. As you can see down below, here's my x plus 2, here's my 2x plus 3. Notice as well that I say these are our factors. It's written in factored form because they're next to each other with, a, with an implied multiplication in between. And if I asked you to list your factors, it would be x plus 2 and 2x plus 3. Remember as well in class we also practice saying what is one factor. So what is one of the factors that goes in this problem? The reason for that is a lot of times people think this is the only thing we need to know, just this written out parentheses, when in reality there are two pieces that are important here. There's a factor on the left and a factor on the, on the right. As we go forward in math, those things will actually help us understand the graph of this original equation up here. And when we know, need to know certain details about that graph, these factors will be very important. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. As we've done a bunch of these in class, I think I'm comfortable letting you give it a try on your own. If you do run into trouble, pause it. Let me explain up to the point where you understand or you lost understanding, and then go from there. The big key here is don't just watch every example. Try to do as far as you can on your own, and then hit play and watch it from there. Then pause it again when you think you can do some more. Each problem you should be trying to do more and more of the problem as the one previous to it. Just like memorizing something or going through any kind of step that has a lot of, a lot of steps and a lot of process. Again, in addition to that, try to make sense of each step. If a 2 appears and you don't understand why, listen to it 2 or 3 times if you have to understand. We want to make sure that you really understand not just the process, but also the concepts going on here, which include things such as area and things like that. Okay, so the next example we're going to look at is 3x squared minus 17x plus 20. You're going to want to go ahead and copy that down into your notes into the first blank space. As you know, we're going to be working our diamond problem in our rectangle, so go ahead and try to do as much of the problem as you can. If you run into trouble, you can let the video continue to play, or you can pause it and go back to where you need help. All right, the first thing we know every single time is because of the way we set up the rectangle, the x squared term is always in the upper, upper left-hand corner, and the 20 term is always into the bottom right-hand corner. All we need to know is how can we split up that negative 17. I don't know about you, but I can think of a lot of ways. So we're going to need to use our diamond problem. If you got to this point, pause it. If not, you can watch some more. 
All right, if you can remember, we take our two end terms. Okay, because those are necessary to make the rectangle work, we're going to multiply those together. We're looking for the combination that makes 60. From there, we're going to bring down our negative 17. And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to equal 60 and add up to equal negative 17. A lot of people get confused on problems like this. They'll use something like 20 and 3. You have to be really careful. And when you fill out your diamond problem, you really have to double check it. I can see how 20 and 3 might seem like a good answer. But and I'm going to write it right below here. Perhaps negative 20 and positive 3. Hey, look, that adds up to negative 17. 20 times 3 is 60. But it's not really 60. It would be negative 60. So you really have to be careful. And then you might say, oh, okay, well, if I put a negative here, now I can multiply them together and get positive 60. But it doesn't add up to negative 17 anymore. So you really got to double check. Do each of my pieces work? Do these multiply to equal that part? Absolutely. Do they add to equal that part? Yes, as well. If that works, then you found the right two numbers. Those two numbers, then, are the numbers that go into your rectangle. You have now found a way to split up negative 17. Now we're going to have to fill out the outside. Remember, we don't just throw a 3 on the outside because we think that's what goes there. There has to be only one way to fill this problem out. In this case, in order to make it work, this has to be a 3. That has to be an x, that has to be a negative 4, and that has to be a negative 5. Okay. So again, these problems are going to go a lot quicker because we've already done a bunch of practice in class. Um, if you had to use a lot of help on this problem, on the next one, try to see how much of it you can do before you need to ask for some help from watching the video. Okay, the last step is to say, okay, down below the rectangle, I'm going to multiply out my, my factors, which are 3x minus 5 times x minus 4. You might be saying, hey, they're not the way I'm used to them being written next to each other. Again, I'm just doing that for space sake, but also I'm listing them out. Okay, now we're going to take a look at another example. Again, I want you to copy the problem down into the next blank space in your paper. And do as much as you can on your own. Hit play when you're ready, and then I'll be going over the problem. Again, each time I go over a problem, I'm going to go over it a little quicker than the last one. All right. So first thing we know is that x squared and negative 36 go into the rectangle. Again, that's the way we always set these problems up. Now we need to figure out how to break up our negative 9. The diamond problem is what does that for us. We bring our negative 36 and our x squared to the top and our negative 9 to the bottom. Okay. Now we have to think of our numbers. Because that's a negative on top, I know I'm going to need one of each. It turns out that negative 12 and positive 3 are what works. Because negative 12 times positive 3 is negative 36, and negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. In order for that to work out, that is now the way we need our problem to multiply, so those are going to go into our rectangle. From there, we're going to fill out the outside. x on each side, negative 12, and positive 3. So then we go ahead and erase the diamond problem on my screen, and down below, you're going to go ahead and fill in your two factors, which are x minus 12 and x plus 3. All right, so now we're going to try another one. Um, and again, it says in your group, but you're going to be doing this one on your own on your paper. If you need to have help, of course, call for us to come over, or you can play the video and watch step by step. But again, as I said before, try to do a little bit more each problem, so by the end, you can for sure do 100% of the stuff on your own. So copy the problem down to the next one. Pause the video and see how much you can do. So hopefully you're able to get the whole thing done. First thing we would do is put in the 12x squared and the negative 2. Okay, and now our diamond problem is going to help us figure out how do we split that 5 up to make it work in our rectangle. The two outside numbers go together to form the top. The middle one goes down. Now we're looking for two things that multiply to equal 24 and add up to equal 5. Or remember, basically, they could be adding or subtracting. So in this case, 8 and 3 make 24. We want the bigger one to be positive. They go into our rectangle, and now looking around, this is where we have to be careful. It's possible, looking at the top, that we could put a 4 in there, a 2 in there. Either of those would work. However, if we put a 2, for example, just so you can see, if we put a 2x, 
this would have to be a 6x, which of course won't work with a 3. So the only way to make this problem actually work is to include a 3 on that side, a 4 on the top, and go from there. Okay. At that point, we're going to go ahead and write out our factors. In factored form, is 4x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. Remember, factored form, because each of these is a factor, and this is simplified form, because this is what you get when you simplify the product of the two factors. All right, now we're going to be moving to the second page of our notes. As you can see, we're going to do four more examples of notes, just so we have a variety of problems. From there, we can go ahead and move on to some practice, independent and with our groups. Again, so you're going to try this one on your own. x squared plus 8x plus 15. Pause the video, do as much as you can. This one you should be able to do all on your own, hopefully. All right, so we're going to put the x squared and the 15 in there. And our diamond problem is going to help us split up the 8 into two pieces to go in the empty spots in the rectangle. So we know that the top is going to multiply to equal 15x squared. The bottom, of course, is going to be 8x. So looking for two things that multiply to equal 15 and add up to equal 8. Hopefully you came up with 3 and 5x. Those go into our squares. And now we're trying to determine what outside values would result in that inside as you guys know, it's going to be x and 5. And finally, 3. OK, last step, write it into factored form. And we're done. OK, again, another problem for you to try. All right, go ahead and pause the video, get as far as you can. Hit play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so the 2 and the x squared and the negative 5 go into the squares. Our diamond problem will help us figure out how to split up that 3. So we multiply the 2 and negative 5 together, which gives us negative 10. 3 goes down to the bottom. And now thinking about our numbers, we end up with 5 and negative 2. 5 and negative 2 can then go inside the rectangle. And the only way to make this thing work is to have the 2x squared on the 2x on top and the regular x on the side. And from there, it should be pretty straightforward to get your answer. Remember to double check that everything multiplies correctly. If, for example, you ended up with a negative 2 on the left side instead of a negative 1, and you did not check to make sure everything worked correctly, because the negative 2 and the positive 5 would have made a negative 10 instead of a negative 5 in that yellow number spot. Erasing our x squared on my, on my uh, computer. However, on yours, you're writing it down below. We're going to get 2x plus 5 and x minus 1, which is, again, just taking the factors from the sides of our rectangle. Because inside is everything that's multiplied together to equal the simplified form. Okay, so this problem's a little bit different. You know, give it a shot, pause it, but notice here that we have no middle term. So you may want to think of that as what number represents nothing in math. So pause the video, give it a shot. If you get stuck, I'll go very slow on this one so you can make sure you have opportunities to pause it and solve it yourself. Okay, so obviously the x squared and the negative 25 are going to go in there. Some people think that a 0 goes in there because they're thinking, oh, the third thing is missing. Well, really, if you look at it, the x term is missing. We have our x squared, we have our number, we don't have our x. So what we need to do is we need to think, how can we divide this up? Well, if you really think about it, in this case, we've got x squared and negative 25. Those are our n terms, so that's what's going to go on top. But the question is, what goes on the bottom? There isn't anything there. Well, in math, nothing is 0. So if you want to go from there now and try to solve the rest of it yourself, go ahead and pause it. If not, the numbers end up being 5 and negative 5. From there, we're going to go over here, and we're going to simplify. Now, if you remember in class, some very clever students figured out that every time there's nothing left over in the middle when you multiply is when you end up with opposite things inside your rectangle right here and here. When those two things cancel each other out, 
that's when we end up with nothing left over in the middle. So what that translates if we work our way backwards is the same number here and here, but opposites. So a lot of people will figure out, okay, if there's a zero in the bottom spot, okay, if there's a zero in that spot, that's telling me that I have to have two things that are canceling out. So we're erasing that, we're going to get x plus 5 and x minus 5, which again was the trick when we multiplied, we realized it was the same equation. The only thing that changed was an opposite sign in between the numbers, in between the terms. Okay, so one more to try on your own. This is again another one that's a little bit weird. So really think about your three terms, what's missing and what that would mean. Hit pause. Hit play when you're ready to see some information or to try to check your answer. All right, this one's a little weird. What you have to realize here is that we're actually missing one of our terms. So really, while the 5x squared goes there, really what we're missing is a zero in the bottom right-hand corner. That's going to really come into play when we look at our diamond problem. We're going to have our 5x squared, but we don't have the other term. So it's not like 5x squared goes by itself. It still has to get multiplied by zero, which of course is zero. Down on the bottom, we still have our negative 10x. Okay, so now thinking about it, the only way for that to happen is going to be for one of the things actually to be 0. Because you can't get something that multiplies with 0 without something being 0. So what I mean by that is a lot of people might think, oh, 2 and negative 2. Well, they add to 0, but they multiply to equal negative 4. The only way two things multiply to equal 0 is if one of them is itself 0. Now those two things need to go inside the rectangle. It doesn't matter where they go, but what you'll notice is something very strange here. Obviously, we have nothing in the whole bottom row. So what's that going to mean when we multiply it? Well, what's going to mean is when I multiply here, I'm going to have 5x and x and negative 2. But down at the bottom, there just isn't anything there. The only thing that multiplies into 0 and 0 is 0. Okay, so from here, we're going to go ahead and get rid of our diamond problem. And we're going to ask ourselves, what is our final answer? Well. Really, the best way to do it is we have 5x by itself and x minus 2. Some people might think, is it 5x plus 0? Well, again, we just don't write a plus 0. There's also 0y, zero 0z, zero 0x zero squared. We don't write things that there's 0 of. So this is kind of a weird example. And if you look back at the beginning, it makes some sense. Because earlier in the year, we had learned that when you have two things, you can use a rectangle that's just a 2 by 2. And you can divide out the biggest thing that goes into them, which would, of course, be... 5x and would leave you with x minus 2 left over. So you can see this is really one of those older examples of factoring that we learned earlier in the year, but we can still do it with the diamond problem and rectangle method that we just learned. My reason for showing you this is to show you there really isn't any example that we can't do. So as you guys should know, this is your last example. So what we're going to do from here is please make sure you fill out the form below. Um, it's going to tell you if you really understand some of the steps that are necessary to do these, these things on your own. And in addition to that, make sure your notes are complete, 100%. Um, that's going to be very important for the notebook check. And in addition to have something to look at for examples when you're practicing later. So after that, so there should be a quiz below. If not, then you'll be able to get a worksheet from your teacher.